can look at it two ways. Um, you're happy I'm up here because we won't be here as long. <laughs> or, or, you know, anyways. But um, I will not go two and a half hours like last week, like Pastor did. But, hey, you know what? It was good. We needed it. And uh, the word was brought forth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I do have something, and I believe the Lord has something in my heart for you all. And uh, it will not be three hours. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you got your Bibles with you tonight, let's turn to Revelations 3, and we'll read verse 11. <clears throat> the word says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Pretty simple. Hold that fast which thou hast pretty much it's saying hold on tight to what you have amen for the next little while i like to talk to you on this thought hold that fast which thou hast pretty simple let's lay your bibles down and ask the lord to help us tonight lord i ask you lord just to use me tonight lord god use me as a vessel tonight lord we thank you for all you've done lord i ask you lord to have your way tonight touch my lips lord tonight lord use me as your vessel in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. There are many things that we hold dearly in our lives, things we value very highly. Most of, most of us here tonight, if we go down the line, will name family members, our children, our wife, our pets, are very valuable to many of us. However, there's others that earthly possessions are their most valued things, right? right? I did a little Google search on, on a few things, and I'll get to that in a second. But as a kid, I used to collect baseball cards and comic books. And now, I wish I would have held on to them <laughs> because they are, some of them that I knew I had are extremely well, pretty expensive nowadays. But I sold them. I was... Uh, we were just married maybe a year or two. I sold them for $300. And uh, they're probably worth several thousand dollars right now. But they weren't, they weren't valuable to me at that time. Right? So I did a little Google search. A Honus Wagner card. Anybody who doesn't know he was a, an older baseball player. His card sold for $6.6 .6 million dollars. A Mickey Mantle card sold for $5.2 million. Okay, so let's go from car, uh, to cars. Jay Leno, who, is a pop, who was a popular TV host, his car collection spans upwards of 180 cars, 160 motorbikes, and according to Clarity Net Worth, it is valued over $100 million. At an auction held in Christie's, New York in 2016 during a contemporary art event, Salvatore Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci turned into the most expensive painting ever sold, selling for over $450 million at the end of a 19-minute bidding war. Crazy. Crazy. Now, if I had... 450 million to buy a paint. <laughs> I mean, come on now. <laughs> but people put values on different things. Okay? And um, no matter what, they, 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 they value these things, they collect things. You can look, all these celebrities, these new, new popular movie stars, it's all money, 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 get, 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 biggest thing, biggest houses. But, however, I did get a great gift one time, and I still have that gift. Amen. 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 And it's not my wife, even though she's wonderful. It's not my four kids that she's given me. Amen. You see, the greatest gift that I got was when I was 12 years old at a youth camp in Southern California mountains. An evangelist who had polio a lot younger 
now or then, he is now, preached a message that stirred me so much that I actually went to the altar, repented for my sins, and got the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, that is the greatest gift that we got. Amen. Amen. As a young kid and as a young man growing up, I didn't realize that was the greatest gift that I had. But through trials and tribulations, that gift has always got me through that. Amen. 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 So I received the gift of the Holy Ghost, and I was baptized by my father not too long after that. You see, that gift is worth more than any Honus Wagner card that you could have. It's more valuable than any Jay Leno's card collection that you could have. Amen. This gift cannot be put up for auction and sold to the highest bidder. You see, the greatest possession of all is the gift of eternal life and our salvation from Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it's not for sale. Hallelujah. If you turn to Acts 4 and verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We must hold on to that which we have. Amen? Amen. Don't let it go. We need to hold tight to what we got. Amen? Amen. Today, people in our society view life as how much money as I can have. How much money do I get? How, you know, if I could run, climb the ladder of the corporate ladder, into how high can I get? Right. See, they put value on things that we don't see as very important. Right. Yeah, I, I, it is good to have a good job. It is good to have money, and, and I'm all for having money. You know, I've been blessed with my business to have money, but that's not the most important thing in my life. Amen. The most important thing is my, that I'm saved. And I have the Holy Ghost. And, I'm gonna make, and I want to make you to heaven. Amen. Amen. But see, they value things more differently than we do in the church. How many vacations can I take? How many toys money can buy? Amen. Vacations are nice. I can't take many anymore. Amen. We got... A father-in-law to take care of. <laughs> amen. But, amen. But, Lord bless him. <laughs> just pray for him. He needs the Lord. Amen. I just pray that we are examples and a light in his life. Amen. Amen. So, Matthew 6 and 19 to 20 says this, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Basically, to end, all the stuff that we get, all the millions, all these baseball cars, it doesn't matter. They're just going to be gone. Our treasure is not on this earth. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our stocks doesn't matter. Our 401ks don't matter. When you die, your family members are going to fight over who gets what. And I pray if I die before the Lord comes back, my wife and kids and grandkids will want to serve the Lord. And live a separated lives from the world that we live in today. I don't think they're going to look for any money that I leave them. It's not much. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) But as a father, I want my kids to live this this gospel and live this life of a separated life from the world. Amen. Amen. And if I, if I die and if there's any money in the will, I pray that they just use it wisely. Amen. But I do know that there'll be McDonald's millionaires. Menu, menu millionaires. Is that what it is? <laughs> Amen. Little side joke there. I thought it was funny. Amen. Tough crowd. If you turn with me to Galatians 5.1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again 
with the yoke of bondage. Christ has made us free. Amen. You see, every stripe that was whipped upon his back, every drop of blood that was shed, every strike of the nail head that the Roman soldiers drove into his hands and feet were for our freedom. Hallelujah. That's what we have to hold on to. Hallelujah. The shattered chains of bondage of every drug addict, alcohol, murder, adulterer, and every sinner that has found salvation were because Christ has made us free. Hallelujah. We need to hold that fast which thou hast. Hallelujah. We need to hold tight to that liberty, to that freedom that God gave us. Hallelujah. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back to your old life. Don't go back to where he brought you from. You know, a lot of, a lot of new saints and even Christians that are not grounded and they have shallow roots easily become discouraged and let go and forget what God has brought them out of. Amen. Don't go back to the, 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 the bars and the drug houses that he brought you out of. Amen. You need to hold tight to what you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, they want to give up. People that are shallow, they want to give up because it was easier in the world that they say. But see, that is a lie from the devil. It's not easier outside of the, of the church. Amen. It's easier to live for God than it is to live for the devil. It may seem easier because the devil's not b- bothering you. Right? Right? Right. right? Mm-hmm. But there's no place like the church. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you love the Lord, let's give him a hand clap. <laughs> Don't go back to the places that you used to hang out with hang out in don't go hang out with people that used to hang out with amen because it's it's tough out there it is tough out in the world so you eventually you'll let go of that what you had you'll start to compromise on the line on the line that used to separate you and the world that line starts to become blurred amen it starts to become blurred then the yoke of bondage will be placed upon you and life becomes hard. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 13, 24, it says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way. That leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few be few there be that find it. Becoming entangled again will lead you down the wrong path. You must hold on to that what you have. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 23, or 10 and 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. We don't need to waver in this faith. Waver means to become unsteady or unreliable. Right? When the bills come, do we start to worry? Do you get that doctor's report and you start to become uneasy? Well, I heard stories that Lord healed these people, but why can't he heal me? You start to become uneasy, unreliable. Amen? Amen. Truth is, that's just life. People start thinking that way. But you you can't throw in that towel. You can't give up. Amen? Amen. We must hold firm to the truth of this gospel. Hold tight, hold tight to our apostolic heritage. We need to stand firm. Amen? Amen. Amen. The thing is, the gates of hell won't prevail against the church. Amen. And we are part of that church. Amen? Yes. Amen? Amen. The church will win and prevail at the end. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. James 1 and, 6 says, 1 and 6 says, But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, 
For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Amen. Amen. There's a story in Acts 27, one of many um, adventures that Paul, was when he was prisoner, took, not by his choice, but because they arrested him. The story goes, Paul is sailing from Rome, or for Rome, from Lycia. Paul warns them that it will be a very dangerous journey. The captain doesn't pay any attention to the man of God, and he sets sail. Who, sometimes people don't pay attention to the pastor. Amen? He's the watchman on the wall. He sees things we can't see. So the captain doesn't pay any attention to Paul, and, and they set sail. Soon a wind comes up uh, and begins to blow, and the wind, it was unfavorable and, and boisterous, and the ship was now caught in the middle of the storm. The crew started to get scared, and they started to discard and throw the shipment of wheat and tackle and everything that was not needed to lighten up the ship. They started to throw it up overboard. Paul encouraged the man, telling them no one would be lost except the ship will be damaged. So as the ship began to drift towards the rocks, and there the ship ran aground, front part of the ship was stuck in the ground, but the back part of the ship was broken by the violence of the waves. The officer in charge of the ship told the men to jump into the sea and save themselves. Some swam ashore, some used boards from the broken ship. The thing about it, just like the angel of God that told Paul that they would all be safe, God has assured us in his word, if we remain faithful to him, he will never leave us nor forsake us. He is saying, what he is saying is to hold that fast what thou hast. Amen. Hold on to him. Amen. There are some in the church that may be facing a shipwreck in their life but like Paul and the men in the ship they were determined to make it to the land by holding on to the pieces of the ship in the face of adversity we often often face misfortune and trouble tests and trials and tribulation is at our doorsteps we hold on to the pieces of God's word that is in our hearts and life amen God's word and his promises won't fail you I've learned that over the years of my life since the day I got the Holy Ghost until now, yeah. he has never failed me. Amen. Amen. He has never, he has never, as you could tell, let me, let me go hungry. Right. But he has never failed me. Right. There's been times in my life that he wasn't there, but it was me that wasn't in contact with him. Right. He has always been there. Right. Amen. If it wasn't for the promises in this Bible, yeah. in his word, yeah. I wouldn't have made it. But I held on. I had on, held on to what the promises says in here. Amen. Amen. You need deliverance from something in your life. Hold on. God is your deliverer. Hallelujah. You need an answer about something. Hold on. God is an answering prayer answering God. You need healing. Hold on. God is a healer. Hallelujah. You need salvation. Hold on. God is our Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to hold fast that which thou hast. Hold it tight. Don't let it go. When you hold on to something, when you hold on until he comes, the reward at the end is priceless. Hallelujah. There won't be no amount of money that will want you to trade your crown for anything. Hallelujah. You need to hold tight. Don't let go for any reason. Hallelujah. Don't let life events and circumstances trick you into letting go of your salvation, your walk with God. You need to hold on to what you have. Let no man persuade you to lose your holiness and dedication to God's word. Don't waver in your walk with God. Don't be unreliable and unsteady to the kingdom. We are living in a day and age that the enemy would lose, love nothing more than to see you let go of that which thou hast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just stand and let's love the Lord. 
Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, let's help us to hold on to what we have. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. God, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Lord, Lord, I know this message was for someone here tonight. Hallelujah. Let's just let let's just talk to him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're apostolic. Come on. Let's not be quiet. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I'm thankful for what you've given me, Lord. Lord, I want to hold on to it tight and not let it go. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, when tests and trials come, I want to hold on. Your promises said that you'll be there. You're my buckler. You're my shield, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. God, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. We need to hold on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The altars are open. Hallelujah. Let's talk to him. Hallelujah. Let's just love him right now. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins, Lord. 